what we can do to remain and stay human, uh, both as our as ourselves, but also as businesses. Um, start to address not just social media, which is what was more prevalent three years ago, but as we now move into AI and VR and chatbots and all kinds of good stuff. Welcome to the Schweiki Media Expert webinar series, where we team up with leading marketing and publishing experts to provide you with tips and best practices to help you grow your business and stay on the cutting edge. Welcome to the show. Hello, everyone. I am here today with Brian Kramer, and Brian is a renowned social business strategist, global keynote speaker, and best-selling author. He's one of the world's foremost leaders in the art and science of sharing and has been credited in instigating the hashtag H2H, human business movement in marketing and social. With more than 350,000 social fans and followers and an intimate understanding of the intricacies and inner workings of both social technologies and social behaviors, Brian is both a practitioner and authority on the subject. Brian's first book, There is No B2B or B2C, It's Human to Human, hashtag H to H, rose to the number one top-selling spot in business books on Amazon in its first week, and in January of 2015, the hashtag H to H was named one buzzword for 2015 by the writer. His latest book, Shareology, How Sharing is Powering the Human Economy, made the USA Today's top 150 book list the week of its release, as well as number one on Amazon in four categories, including business and planning. And today, we are going to be talking about stop thinking B2B and B2C and instead think H2H. Brian, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. How are you? Doing excellent. Doing excellent. Uh, very, very excited to dig into this. Uh, read your book recently. Uh, been here more and more about uh, the whole marketing and social landscape circling back around to human connections, if you can believe it. So um, this uh, the, the movement and everything you're doing here uh, seems to – well, obviously, you were on the cutting edge, but right now it's, it's, it's more than applicable. So very, very interested to see what you have to say today. Um, so, a as we uh, kick things off here, uh, I just want you to quickly explain what H to H is, as well as what inspired you to create this H to H movement. Yeah, um, H to H is a human is human to human. It's um, the the whole title is there's no B to B or B to C. It's human to human. And I um, was presenting on stage three years ago at Bloomberg West, uh, given a keynote and gave. Um, uh, this talk on a totally different subject on influencer marketing. And um, in the middle of the deck, I was talking about human to human. There's no B2B or B2C. It's human to human. And, and all of a sudden, um, after seven years of talking about this, it went viral and it hit over 80 million impressions over 48 hours. It had over 15 languages that it was translated into and over 2,000 bloggers blogging about it. And, and so I turned it into a book, basically taking everything that I'd written about for the last several years before that and converted everything I'd, wrote, I'd written about into a book to describe what it means to be human human in this time. Uh, we've always been human to human, but as we enter into um, you know, a new phase of technology, um, it's becoming more and more um, prominent. And so uh, basically writing the book was a way of letting people know what, what, where we're at and where we're going and what we can do to remain and stay human, uh, both as, our, as ourselves, but also as businesses um, start to address not just social media, which is what was more prevalent three years ago, but as we now move into AI and VR and chatbots and all kinds of good stuff, machine learning, it's it's starting to become even more important. So um, so I, I think it's the shelf life, if you will, on uh, being human and 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 the thought of being um, you know uh, um, uh, talking with people directly is is even more important today. Yeah, yeah, and you, you're hearing it more and more. I, I uh, actually I think came, I ran into one of your uh, colleagues and friends, Ted Rubin, the other day, and we actually do podcasts on here with him as well. And he's all about that as well. And uh, I, I think you guys are very aligned and, and, and are uh, thought leaders in this. And and yeah, I mean it's 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 becoming more and more. The, the more crowded the web gets, the more important it is to to develop these connections and and and, and really dive deep into them. And and on that note, and we're, we're talking about trying to be more human. You mentioned speaking more human in our marketing, not necessarily talking to one-on-one -on -one necessarily, but you mentioned more speaking more human. 
So can you dig into what you mean by this as well as some good examples of maybe some companies that are doing this right? Well, what I meant by that um, three years ago has changed now. Um, not entirely, but but a lot of it has changed because um, because we, we we were automating so much um, or trying to at least. And while we when we try to automate, we also we start to make things sound less um, like ourselves, and we start to speak to the masses rather than individuals, and we start to do less personalization um, to the individual to what matters most to each person, and and then we start to lose touch with each person as that digital transformation starts to take place. So um, I, I think that, you know, part of that part of it is is making sure that that you're sounding that you're giving your best human speak, if you will, not that that sounded um, <laughs> very human itself. But then um, but then, you know, really uh, also pairing back on on the, the acronyms, you know, oftentimes when we speak inside of a company, we're used to our own lingo. Um, we're used to, you know, acronyms and 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 words that matter most to us, um, you know, on that topic of whatever your company's talking about. But it doesn't um, it doesn't resonate with people outside because they don't live your uh, live your speak every day. And so um, that speak that that um, way of of talking about your product or service ends up becoming the content that you write about, which ends up confusing the consumer or the customer. And um, and then we try to automate it on top of that, and now all of a sudden the disconnect is there, and we're sitting there scratching our heads, thinking, what what's the problem? I mean, this says exactly what we do, and it it has um, everything they need. They should be able to click on it, purchase our service, and go, or or um, or read more. And um, and 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 yet, you know, oftentimes we forget that um, that you know we need to talk, we need to write, talk, and and be. Um, aware that plain language is still um, still still uh, needed, no matter what level you are. the The other side of it is um, is that you know it's the the first part of that book is called "There's No B to B or B to C," and it's not really around what um, what kind of business or process you have. It's really more towards the fact that everyone has access to the customer or the prospective customer. Everyone can get on Twitter and see what people are saying about your product. It doesn't matter if you are a channel sales marketer and you work through another company to sell your product. You still can go on Twitter and see what they're saying about your product. You can still go on Facebook or, or LinkedIn and see what people are, are generating around your product. And, and the fact that you uh, have access to that data and can even have a direct conversation with them changes the game, or at least changed the game, uh, you know, several years ago when Facebook started coming, um, becoming a, a thing. So, so now all of a sudden, when you talk about speaking more human, um, you know, you, you really have this chance to speak, uh, speak like one, but um, then most of the time we put our brands out in front and say, you know, you do the talking as the brand, and, and what, what people most want most is to actually talk to a real person. Um, they want to actually talk about, you know, what the problem is or what the challenge is or how to solve something. You know, I uh, recently uh, spoke at Adobe Summit, and one of the great things about Adobe is that if you ever have a problem with one of their products and you tweet about it, um, or at least in my my case, I've heard back from people that actually work inside Adobe helping me, um, you know, with a product and how to how to use something. And I just think that's cool that they allow their employees and they put their employees up front and say, if you know the answer, answer it. And um, and that's cool. A lot of companies will not allow that. They have too many uh, stop gaps to you know letting them, or, or I should say firewalls to letting them really say you know what they already know and generate a conversation. So you know people first, people forward, um, speaking simply, and um, and understanding that everyone has access to the customer is really important. Yeah, that, that that's that's some good stuff. Now to kind of get somebody, let's say, and Brian, you sold me on this. You know we. We, we have been speaking business speaker, coach speaker, whatever you want to call it, right, um, and not more human. How can I get my mind in the right place? Like I've been doing this the wrong way for so long that I, I really need kind of an exercise to, to, to kind of guide me this. Do you have any advice on that? Can you point anybody? Is there any other companies to follow? Like, hey, check out what this company is doing, or do you have any resources or anything like that that can kind of – help people get more human and speak more human in the ideology that you're talking about? Well, you know, I mean, here's a good example. Go, go to MailChimp 
And even if you don't use them, sign up for their free trial and just follow their service and see how they talk to you. It's very fun and engaging and and um and back to the word fun, they make it they make it um you know, kind of, kind of a, a, um, a thrill to be able to work or, 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 or see how they are interacting with you along the way. And they do these little things through the user experience that makes you feel like, you know, they're, they've really paid attention to the detail and they really care about your time. Like um, when you're uploading a file, it says we're crunching the numbers. Um, you know, we can, we can only move so fast, but until then, check this out, you know, or um, it, it's just, it, it makes it a lot more fun than, um, loading <laughs> or reloading, yeah. you know, and, 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 and we don't pay attention to like just, just those little inter, uh, interim or, or the little interval uh, words that are describing your experience or, um, or I, I remember seeing a Jay Bear post on Facebook about, um, you know, the errors that he receives and what kind of error language that, um, that people use and why don't programmers take an error and actually make that error fun. So, you know, hey, errors happen. Um, it's it's okay, but have some fun with it. Say if this error happens, you know, throw some humor at it and 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 uh, entertain the customer and say, well, we're working on it. We're crunching the the numbers. Until then, check this out or you know whatever it is that you want to say. So so what my point is is that there's l these little um, there's these little instances in every customer journey that um, that really matter. And, um, and and oftentimes we skip the the important ones, the moments of truth, and we move to um, you know kind of the major milestones. Um, but that's not really where the magic happens. It, it really happens when you pay attention to the detail in the in the content and what you say. The second thing is actually quite kind of um, it's kind of basic, but it actually really works. And that's to sit down at a table with somebody and actually play play roles. Um, role playing is really helpful to document. You know, if the customer, you, you play the customer across the table from me and we talk back and forth and we document um, what we're going to say in real time. And in real time, we document that and then we translate that to um, our marketing. And that way um, we're speaking it and we like to listen to people as they speak much more than we do as then they talk because sometimes we, we make it too perfect when, when, we talk, when we write. We make it too, good, too, um, too robotic. And so if we were to take our, our, our talk speak or talk and convert it into written language, um, then that would, be, um, that would be a huge step forward. And I, I think sitting around a table and actually documenting it is probably the best way to do it. Huh. That, that, that's some great advice. So, I mean, basically, I mean, have marketing meetings about your communications in, in various forms, be it your initial messages, but then also, um, you know, if you have online site, just like, w what are your automated messages? What are you saying? Like, let's, you don't need to be boring, like, and take a step back and look at stuff that way. That's, that's, that's the first time I've heard that, Brian. I mean, I'm sure you've said it before, and I apologize for maybe missing it, but that, that, that is, I think that's really going to get some people in the right frame of mind. I appreciate that example. Um, uh, now, You've also, and this kind of goes right along the lines of this, is you, we have content <coughs> content, and we have con verse context. Um, it's very uh, interesting hearing you, you talk about the difference of those, but can, can you explain for the listeners what is the difference between these two terms, content versus context, and how, they, and how that relates to marketing? Well, the biggest, the biggest uh, area is context. I think, I think most of your listeners are probably going to know what content is. Um, mm -hmm. But context, in context may may actually sound, excuse me, quite familiar as well. But in the in terms of what what I'm talking about there, I think you're either pulling that from a blog or from my book. Um, the the con the context in content is what we take for granted, and and we we don't realize that as we're online, we're peeling the onion. Uh, not everyone understands us, knows us, or hears us uh, every day. So we're taking for granted the fact that. You know, they don't know where we're coming from. And so you really want to take them through a journey of, of letting them know who, who you are um, and, and really explaining it in, in bite-sized chunks or, or little, um, little bits along the way because people can only take so much um, in, uh, either about you or about um, any given, at any given time. So um, giving context is, 
is has changed. You don't get to stand in front of somebody and give them your contacts. Um, you you have to earn it over time, and so you're peeling this onion layer, one layer at a time, to get to the nice core soft middle. Um, you know to to really understand who you are, and then at that point you can you know potentially sell them something because you've earned the right to offer them something of substance or or something that they they might um, uh, trust you with. And so how do you get to that core center of trust is through um, through giving people context around who you are, um, what you believe in. Um, interesting things about you that makes you more human uh, so that they can identify with you and um, and then and then what you are all about uh, that's where the content comes in where where you're starting to layer in uh, educational content things that they can help identify with and learn from hmm. that's interesting I mean it's very interesting um, I, I always like to try to take theory and, and take you know advice and, and try to put it into something tangible, you know, be it social messages, email messages. So I get what you're saying. It's like, hey, let them get to know you, and then let them get to know what you have to say, and then let them get to know what you have to offer, and then and then, and then ask for a deeper relationship. So it makes sense in theory, but like how, how would one accomplish this through social or, um, you know, maybe email or, or, you know, you tell me, like, you know, th this methodology – Apply it to some marketing channels and, met and, and methodologies and, and walk us through like how one would, would maybe, you know, if you were, you know, consulting a business, how you would advise them on do accomplishing what you just mentioned. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, um, it's kind of, you know, it's what we talk about in terms of integrated marketing um, or mixed, mixed level uh, multi-channel marketing. Um, you know, it, there's there's um, there's the, um, the the top end of the funnel and the the bottom end of the funnel. And when you're looking at the, the top end, it's getting people into your world. Um, so people don't know who you are. It's creating awareness or air cover, and um, and then there's ground. And and so in the air cover piece, you're you're um, helping them to understand you who you are. That's your content. That's your blog. Um, that's your your um, your uh, uh, educational piece. Mm -hmm. Maybe then you take it to the next level and you create an ebook that has something that you would typically charge for because it's more than uh, more than a blog, less than a, a full book, but but much more, and it offers much more value. So at this point, you're offering something of value that moves them into uh, you know a gated piece that might be uh, an email address. Again, along the way, you're you're being more human in the way that you speak. So they're trusting you. They want to be a part of your world. Now they trust you enough to give you their email address. And now it's time to feed them more information. It's not time to sell them. Um, and that's the mistake that a lot of people yeah. make is, is um, you know, oh, I, I have your email address. Let's start selling you my, my wares. And so I think that it's, it's, it's time to now start, you know, really educating them now that you have their ear. Don't lose it. Um, give them more, uh, get, educate them more, um, show them who you are, uh, again, give them more context, and then move them to the next level where maybe you give them something they didn't ask for and you surprise and delight them with another ebook that, um, you know, they don't, that doesn't require their email address. Um, it's just, here you go. I just wanted to give this to you. I'm making this up, but there's, there's a lot. Of no, I mean, no, no I'm, I'm following and, you. And then the next step is to actually uh, keep feeding them your ideas. Now they have insight, no, inside knowledge. So if you subscribe to my, um, my, my, on my blog at briankramer.com and you, you, um, you, you subscribe to any uh, areas of my, my so-called newsletter, and the reason I say so-called is because I handwrite it every single week. And it's, it gives you insight into what I'm thinking and how I'm thinking and how my week went. And then I dive into something that, that is very educational. And it's something that you can only get if you are on my newsletter. And, and then I reply to every single email that everybody um, uh, sends me. And that way, you know, that, that moves the human level to a new, hopefully a new level um, for most newsletters. So, so you know, it, it, it walks through and I, I walk the walk with my same newsletter. And basically, it's that whole process of giving, 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 um, and then giving some more and then eventually maybe asking for something once you've moved them to the to the line where, you know, they're 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 needing more than that. They really want to take their themselves to the next level. So for instance, like next month I'm gonna be launching one of my biggest um my biggest products, which is which will be a 
a course on um, how to how, on, it, it's in the genre of personal branding how to how to build yourself up to do th more things like speaking or or um, getting to TED uh, to, you know eventually doing a TED talk um, which, which I was really proud of of being able to accomplish and showing um, how how the process went and what to do to get there and how to write a book and how to do all these different things and how to basically become um, a better known in your field uh, or an expert. And so um, so all these things are things that I can't just come out of the gate and sell somebody on. These are things that I have to educate them on in terms of what my qualifications are, um, what what helps them to know who I am so they can trust me with you know, potentially a payment so that they know I'm not going to walk away and leave them without anything. And that I'm really going to come through for them and I'm going to take them to the next level. And to do all that without ever having met them in person is not something that you can just do with one email uh, or it's not just one thing you can do with one reply. It's something that you have to do over time and, and building those relationships and being as human as possible, you know, giving them some insight into who you are. That's the process. I, I love it. I love it. So let's uh, backtrack for the listeners here. We're talking about you got to start with building your awareness, and that's where the content, you know, come, you know, is in. You know, you know, helpful. You still need to be helpful. You need to be educational. You know, you need you need to solve some problems. You need to do that so you can create awareness for two reasons: one, awareness of the company, and two, awareness of a potential problem, need, service that they they might they might have or they might need. So then you're doing that. Then you then you follow through with okay. Here's a here's a larger offer. Now you know who I am. You believe what we're saying. You believe we have some good stuff. Here's like a, a bang up ebook, which is what you mentioned is more than a blog, less than an actual book, but something extra of value that is worthy of them giving you the opportunity to email them and they give you your email address. So now then they drop into. What could be automated programs, but still need to be very human. Now, this is this is the part that I'd like to get your advice and and do appreciate that I understand that there's not a one size fits all. Uh, there's different consideration, you know, pro, you know, for for different types of products. You have low, high, medium consideration. So I understand there's not a one size fits all, but I'd like for you just to generally help explain this part when we're talking about letting people get to know you in addition to continuously feed them good content. So and maybe a gift or or whatnot. So you, now they're in your your email, and now you're pinging them with like, hey, here's. Don't ping them with, hey, this is who I am, and this is what I have to sell. You're going to ping them with more helpful content, maybe an extra big surprise. Now within this part right here, what's your advice on that? Letting them know and then look into your company because it could be like you know you could have like a fun company video or plan tour would you incorporate something like that within this series of of reach outs and maybe like a weekly ping to you know again gift 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 and then do you do you mix in like hey this is where we're, we're fun we're awesome you might align with our company culture do you mix that stuff in during this process as well yeah, the more that you mix in of of all all levels of of who you are, um, authentically speaking, the better it is. But but um, the the thing is is that don't, you know people people sense energy, they sense what when you're trying to trying to be something that you're not, um, even through the written language. And so whatever you do, do it if if that's what feels right to you. Um, you know what I would what I would recommend to you wouldn't be the same thing I recommend to someone else because you might have a different tone or style or um, you know and 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 people really want to gravitate towards people that are just being themselves and um, and 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 really um, the answer to that isn't a one size fits all it's a it's a yeah well is that something that you would normally do then yeah you should is it something that you would never do then don't force it because um, it won't come out right. So, um, so you got to do what's right. Uh, I'm, I am an advocate for, you know, making, for ta taking the inside and, and, and showing people what's inside of, of your organization. And oftentimes I think people just want to see what goes on the behind the scenes, especially um, people. That's why live video, I think, is uh, starting to become or is becoming um, really, really good right now because people can get a chance to, to see what's happening behind the scenes, especially with these you know, um, stories that are happening on Facebook and Instagram and Snapchat. Um, getting to see behind the scenes of, of things 
it brings people closer. It gives them an understanding as to who you are, and um, and and that's where the fun can come in. So it doesn't. It can be mixed in in the different layers of your of your marketing mix. It doesn't have to just be all in your email. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. So, but but I, I hear yeah. I mean, and, and like I mentioned at the beginning of that question, I, I don't. It's impossible. I mean, you would be very inauthentic if you were like this is exactly what you need to do because I mean. Every every situation is a snowflake, and and I get that. I'm just trying to set some basic parameters, and, and you've really helped with that. But th but again, that that that's 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 the plan is you know lead with awareness, get them involved into your email, or if it's Snapchat that you're big in, or if it's Instagram, get them get them somewhere where you're going to be able to really continue to give these people direct gifts, uh, more information about yourself, be authentic. And then eventually you ask. Now, do you have any basic, you know, rule of thumbs of, you know, how far down the road do you at least mention, hey, by the way, this is what we do? Not necessarily like, can we set up a call? But this is what we do. Let us know. I mean, do you have any basic parameters of like, hey, make sure you don't jump into that this quickly? Is there anything like that? Or again, is that just one of those? It's going to depend on the company. Yeah, you know, um, so here's a good example. Edu um, educate them through education so um, on, on what you do. So if you're if, – the, the thing about sharing is that when you share a lot about a, sp a specific topic, it's kind of um, – you know, people are going to start to sense that that's what you do. Um, if you talk about chatbots for the next four weeks and all you do is share chatbot, chatbot, chatbot on every channel about how to build them, about what to build them, about showing them what you did on chatbots, about creating the first chatbot, about the 10 things you can do to really not um, do well with a chatbot, about you know the, the different forms of how you can, you can um, uh, converse with people with your chatbot. Where is it heading in the future? I mean, I just made up what, six, seven different um, or more different um, topics that you can write about, boom. Now, for the next four weeks, you're writing about it, you're, you're helping them, you're doing these things, and guess what's going to happen? People are going to start to think that that's what you do. Mm -hmm. So it's not that you have to actually scream in there and, you know, it doesn't make you an expert by doing that, but it certainly moves you closer to that. Now, at the end of that whole thing, if you say, if you want help with your chat bot, I'd be happy to help you. It's, it's part of the process of getting to know someone. You'd never walk in the room and, and shout at the top of your lungs and say, I'm a chat bot ex expert. Buy my services, <laughs> and they would never do it. But if you tell them, hey, um, my name is Brian Kramer, pa my passion, my love is around chatbots. What do you do? Boom, you've already told them. So now at, this, at, at that time, you can educate them on what to do and how to do it. I think we're doing that right now in the podcast, right? We're talking about how to be more human. And so at the end of the day, I would suspect that companies are going to um, reach out. Actually, I know for a fact that companies will reach out and say, well, how do I, how do I use chatbots to be more human? And I'm probably going to be a better person to hire for somebody like that than somebody who talks about finance all the time. So, um, so these are the things that, that you're, like I said, peeling the onion with. Over time, you're giving them so much education and value. And at the same time, you're saying, um, you know, I've, I've done this and I can do this and I've, um, I've, I've tested this and this works, but this doesn't. Well, I'm, gonna, I'm probably going to come to you for con consultation more than I will anyone else because you helped me the most. Mhm. Mm mhm. Good stuff, Brian. Good stuff. Uh, and, and I love and, and your if you do have an ask, um I've seen this and I've talked about it with some other experts. It could be as simple as just putting a very non-intrusive PS, you know, hey, by the way, if you're interested in talking more about this, you can contact us here. Do you do you agree with that methodology as well where you don't ever have to come up with a direct ask email as you're just sharing and being helpful and, you know, being awesome? Um, being human, being authentic, you know, that, that I've seen that be a way where you kind of like, you know, do it. And then, and that almost adds more to it because you are kind of just putting it as a PS. You're just kind of putting it as an afterthought. You're not leading with it. You're barely even mentioning it. Do you agree with that as well as a way? Cause people are like, well, I, I do want to eventually like have some call to action and say something eventually. I, I've seen that uh, with some other experts that we interviewed to say that that's a good way to do it as well. Do you, do you agree with that as kind of a, a, side, way, a side way of kind of 
at least getting it out there that this is what we do or do yeah i'm a little bit more of a soft seller um but but you you may you may find a lot of people that are a little bit more hard selling and i don't think that there's anything wrong with that if that's who they are again but um i'm a little bit more of a soft seller so i mean the way i might put it is if you have any questions or ever want to talk about chatbots I'd love to help you. Um, let me yeah. know how, how we can talk. And, you know, so it's a little bit softer. It's not, um, yeah. we do this and I'd like to work with you and, and you can buy my services doing this. It's, it, so I, I kind of, you know, it, I soften it up a little bit, but yeah, there's no problem with, with saying that. In fact, um, you know, in my emails all the time, I say at the very bottom that oftentimes I, um, you know, we'll, we'll drop a link in or a, a product that I like that um that does something that i think would benefit you um and yes i will make money off of this but i would never um i would never suggest something that i, I wouldn't use either personally or wouldn't suggest for other people because i think it's a great product and i stand behind it um and that i think goes miles so you know at the same time i'm saying yeah i'm selling you right now but i am also giving you something i think that could be helpful and it's worth it in the end for what you do and I think you could buy it. So I do that all the time, but again, it's a, it's more of a, it's, it's, it's an mm -hmm. educational, um, you're coming from an educational side, not from a um, uh, spend your money with me side. Yeah, no, I hear you. Yeah, and, and um, I like that. I mean, it, it resonates with me personally. Um, yeah, I mean, as much as I've been in sales the last 20 years, I, I still, you know, I, I, <laughs> I don't wanna be a pest. I don't wanna bug people, I don't know, it bugs, me to think that I'm bugging somebody else, you know, um, and I, you know, and I think most people are like that. So um, I think this is, is going to be very welcoming to hear, hey, that's how you can say it without saying it. Um, so I, I love that. So uh, to, to move on here, um, I was very intrigued by what you were talking about, you know, human sensory building. Can, can you explain what that is and how you can accomplish that through your messaging? Yeah. Yeah. Um well, you know, the, the human, we only have so many senses on mind, thank God, um, because if we had smell, I think it would be a whole different web uh, <laughs> internet. But, um, you know, there, there, are, uh, there are different senses that we as humans that we have that, um, that um, and endear us differently to different things. Um, you know, so, so we have, um, we, we're able to see, obviously, we're able, we're, but, but we're also visual learners. Um, and, and so some of us like to watch things. So that's where YouTube and Vimeo and, and things like that come into place. Some of us would rather listen. We're more, um, um, uh, 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 oh, I can't, I can't uh, remember the, the word for it, but uh, it, it's not autodidactic, but it's, um, uh, we, we learn better through, through hearing. And so, or we'll just call it listening. Um, why not? Why not? So, right. um, so you know, <laughs> There's a word for it, but it'll come to me tonight at 2 a.m. Um, so, so listening, um, listening is something that we do. So there again is a podcast. So you know, different people learn in different ways. And if you get to know your customer or your potential customer, you know how they like to learn. Uh, then you can serve them the right content. So if, if you serve someone who hates reading and you're just sending them blogs all the time, you've done nothing better. Um, if you start to get to know their their um, uh, their learning style better over time, again, peeling the onion, then you know that they're, they're either going to be more visual, more uh, video, more audio. Uh, maybe they like to play. So there's uh, gamified learning experiences where it's a little bit more of a mix. Or maybe they just are people that are uh, introverts or altruists, and they just want to um, they want to talk to people specifically, and they're never going to um, really interact because they're they're more um, they, they're more engagers uh, directly, I should say. And then there's um, there's there's um, there's there's touch, and touch is coming, and you're you're able now actually to uh, to feel with a tactical sense um, in technology on. One end, Cisco's developed this um, this system so that you can actually uh, uh, shape um, shape a product or shape something with your hands. Um, it's connected to through through uh, your computer and through the internet. And then on the other side, um, it could be all all the way across the rest of the world. They're watching you actually shape this thing and can see it, and so you can you can feel and touch that. And eventually, I think even um, even our iPhones are going to have 
more of a sensory experience. Like you've noticed if you have the new iPhone, um, the, bu the home button actually isn't a button. They've just replicated it with a, with a, um, a vibration. So it feels like you're pushing a button. So there's hmm. different sensor sensors, uh, sensory uh, uh, feelings that can be created with all of our products that helps us to become closer as we start to uh, build the, the um, uh, user experience. Gotcha. Gotcha. So basically, you know, don't just stick, I mean, with one type of content in the sense that, I mean, if that's all you can do, that's all you can do. But understand that some people might want to be visual learners, some people might want to be audio learners, some people might want to be written learners, and then obviously the other cool things coming around down the line. But at least be aware of that. Be aware that you might be better off doing videos. You might be better off doing audio, you know, and, and understand that there's other ways that other people like to consume content. So at least keep that in mind uh, as you're producing your content or developing your plan. Am I hearing that right or is there, am I missing anything there? Yeah, absolutely. And ask them, ask them, go ahead and ask them. I mean, send, you know, if you have an email list, say how, out of these five ways, how do you like to receive your content? Then, then send it to them that way. Um, you know, nothing wrong with that. And, and get to, like I said, get to know them over time and, and ask them questions. Um, people love, love to be asked questions as long as you're not consuming their, their time or um, taking away from something else. But, but a quick question here and there, man, you can, you can turn your entire marketing funnel into a, into a, a personalized, um, uh, uh, effective funnel. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Very, very cool. Now, before I have to let you go, I, I want you to touch on, uh, and it goes, I believe, with, you know, being human, it's, it, it, you call it the delightful side of dis disruption. Love to hear your thoughts on this and what you mean by this, as well as maybe some examples, if you can share. <laughs> I just had to mute my computer because a garbage truck went by, which is why I had that that pause. So I just had a human moment. Sorry about that. <laughs> it's um, all right. So, um, so yeah, being just dis delightfully disruptive. Um, you know, there there are five ways that you can create delight delightful disruption. Um, the first one is stop thinking uh, that you are the customer. Um, oftentimes, we think that we know the the product better than than our customer does. We know what you know. Not all of us. Are, in fact, none of us are Steve Jobs. Um, so, um, so it is, it is rare for us to understand exactly what the customer thinks. For instance, my friend Phil McKinney, who is the former chief, uh, chief technology officer of HP, uh, went into Best Buy stores and he actually watched people who were buying um, laptops and he saw that they were interacting with the HP laptops in a certain way. Um, and, and it wasn't the way that they had designed it. Uh, so basically, you know, they were reflecting light for anyone wearing glasses and it was making the screen hard to see, but they never knew that in, in all the time that they were developing the product. So he immediately called his team and the product was redesigned and sales jumped through the roof because he literally learned from the customer right there in Best Buy. Um, so the fact that you think you're the customer is not the case. Uh, number two is um, eat like a bird, poop like an elephant. This is my favorite quote from Guy Kawasaki who coined it. Um, and he basically is saying that you can, you can, you can, um, you can iterate over time. You don't have to start out by knowing everything. You don't have to start a product by knowing everything. The Mac, the, what he's talking about there is in the, the Mac or the, the Apple days. Um, they didn't start out with what we have now. They didn't start out even with hardly anything. They had almost 4K of memory, and all they could do was, um, well, at a certain point, they could, all they could do was really just word processing, and that was it. And even then, it was just bold, italicized, and underlined. That's it. And so um, it was called Word Perfect, and you didn't have really anything else that you could do in this product other than bold, italicized, and underlined. But then the next version came out, and they were able to do more. Now, here's the thing. Apple would always had the capability of producing um, all of these different things right up front, but they didn't. They wanted to test the product and iterate it over time so that they built it for the user, not for themselves. So, eat, so they ate like a bird up front to get the product out, but they uh, pooped like an elephant uh, later on to get, <laughs> make sure that, that you understood, um, they understood the product and how they're building it. Number three is delight with the unexpected. Um, you know, this is really, really um, doing, like it, it is what it says. It's doing things that people don't expect, um, but doing it in a delightful way that they never saw coming, they also find it useful. 
Um, you're giving them something that they they really need, and um, and and they don't know um, they didn't know they needed it even. Uh, like for instance, I actually delivered a free two liter when I was a pizza delivery driver with a medium or larger. And every time I deliver a free two liter, they would give me uh, like five and ten dollar tips because. Uh, well, in college they had cotton mouth, and that's exactly what they needed. But they never <laughs> ordered a they never ordered a two liter. They never ordered anything to drink because they were uh, never thinking about that when they did the order. They needed it right when they got it, and they're like, "Oh man, I wish I ordered that." So here I am delivering stuff they really needed, and it was delightful and unexpected. And guess who made more tips at the end of the day? So number four is using storytelling as a strategy. Um, you know, this is really um, even more prevalent today than ever because we're uh, we're taking in stories on so many different channels. So, um, so really understanding, you know, how to tell your story cross channel, um, how to how to deliver. Like I said, as you're peeling the onion across different channels, you're giving them little um, little little pieces, little 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 snippets of who you are, and and a good brand or a good person knows how to tell that story so that it really starts to lay the foundation for later on when you do go to ask the, the sale. And then number five is designing the experience. And that's, that's the largest, probably ch most challenging piece because it's what we talked about up front where you're sitting around the table and you're actually talking through the experience and you're talking about what uh, you would do if this, and then this. So, you know, if the customer says this, what are we going to do? If the customer says that, what are we going to do? And, and you start to design that experience, but you design it in a human way. Um, and that's that's where most of us skipped past that and went straight into let's design a product um, without ever sitting down at the table with the customer in mind. Um, I know some companies that actually have a red chair. I can't remember which one told me this. Somebody's going to listen to this and tell me that was me that told you that. Um, I, one person one person was telling me that they have a red chair in their room and and it um, and that red chair, one person always has to sit there at the company, and that chair and that person becomes the customer. So no matter what, during that entire meeting, that person actually speaks uh, on behalf of the customer to make sure that they're represented in the room every time they have a meeting, which I think hmm. is brilliant. That's so anyway, brilliant. those are the five um, five delightful ways of of um, of disrupting. And um, and actually, I have a full, I have a blog about this on my website as well. Awesome. Well, Brian, this has been a true pleasure. Um, it, it, everything you're saying makes sense, but some of the most, um, you know, easiest things can be very complicated, or you can make them complicated. And it takes, you know, listening to somebody like you and having you point it out and say, hey, everybody stop, reset, think about it this way. And then it just starts becoming really a lot more clear, at least it has for me today. And uh, I really appreciate your insight, and uh, I'm sure others will as well. Um, would love to let everybody know how they can continue to learn from you so they can, can uh, keep on getting these great nuggets. Yeah, um, so, so two things. One is um, if you would like to take in an assessment, it's a 30-second assessment, you can go to uh, this free uh, assessment, and it will lay out for you uh, exactly what kind of sharer you are and, and what kind of influencer you are. Uh, so that you can you can um, you can lay these kinds of human foundations uh, across all your marketing in the right way, and it will guide you through um, a lot of what we just talked about today. So if you go to briankramer.com, um, that's Brian with a Y and Kramer with a K, a forward slash personal brand quiz, and and even even if you're thinking about this for your company, it actually works for companies as well, but it's called personal brand quiz. So briankramer.com forward, forward slash personal brand quiz. And then it takes, like I said, 30 seconds. I've had over 20,000 people take it and only three people argue with me that it was off. So I think my, my, my chances are pretty good that it's, um, it's going to be accurate. And, um, and it's based on a New York Times study that I then turned into a formula that um, that then converts it into a uh, how-to. Um, and it's all educational, no selling, as we talked about before. So uh, I think your your listeners would probably enjoy that. And um, and otherwise, you can just, you know, check me out on briankramer.com. Everything that I do is there. You can sign up for newsletter or check out podcasts or my HGA chats or any of my blogs. I've, I've, I've got all the sensory experiences there. Gotcha. Thanks again, Brian. The, again, this has been a lot of fun and, um, you know, looking forward to our next one. Awesome, man. Thank you so much. Thank you.